Welcome back to our channel Machinery and Technology. Today, we have a truly electrifying topic to delve into pipeline construction technology. The current natural gas pipeline boom gives many homeowners a first row seat to the process of pipeline construction. The rush to move natural gas to markets places pipelines too close to homes, with construction taking place in backyards, farms, pastures, and right at the mailboxes of residents throughout the country. This video walks you through the process of a natural gas pipeline currently being constructed. So, if you're ready to spark your curiosity, let's dive right in. started. After all federal and state level permits are approved and easement agreements or eminent domain condemnations completed, the process of pipeline construction can begin. Crews flag the boundaries of all locations where construction activities will take place. The flags mark the extent of the temporary construction zone surrounding the pipeline right-of-way, row, as well as the staging and storage areas. The width of the right-of-way is determined based on the diameter of the pipe, 8 to 42 inches, with widths ranging from 80 to 125. While existing roads are used when possible, temporary access roads are also constructed to create direct packs from staging areas to the pipeline route. Step 1. Construction Staging Areas and Storage Yards In order to construct a pipeline, staging areas and storage yards are cleared, strategically located along the planned right-of-way. These areas are used to stockpile pipe and to store fuel tanks, sandbags, silt fencing, stakes, and equipment parts. They provide parking for construction equipment, employee trucks, and locations for office trailers. Staging areas are cleared and covered in rough stone gravel, often reinforced with large wood timber matting. These areas can be located in fields, pasture, or forested land and can impact streams and wetlands. Often. These areas require the construction of excess roads to and from paved roads, and to and from the areas to the pipeline route. In areas with large population, areas where the construction may have a significant environmental impact, or areas where the construction logistics is geographically difficult to perform, pipeline construction is typically avoided where as possible. These areas include Rocky Mountains, forests, and flood areas. Furthermore, the safety and execution techniques for pipelines entering a city are highly complex owing to the movement of heavy equipment in crowded places and the large number of unmapped interferences. It is important to note that both modal interface and intersections of modal types such as trucks crossing a railroad or cargo planes slash helicopters, barges carrying pipes, or double jointing impact are typically logistical activities inherent to large pipeline enterprises that involve potential accident risks and the necessity of comparative costs analyses. Step 2. Clear cutting the row. After the equipment is accessible in the staging area, work will begin to clear cut the pipeline right of way. Landowners have the option of selling the timber themselves 
or allowing the company responsibility for its sale or disposal. Large trees are stockpiled or hauled off, while the branches and treetops are placed into piles and burned. A stump grinder then removes the remaining tree stumps in the row. Step 3. Excavating the Trench The trench for the pipeline is dug after the row is cleared of trees. As seen in several of the photos below, the hillsides are so steep that trench diggers are lowered and secured to larger bulldozers with a tether line. If rocks ledges are encountered, track hoes with jackhammers are brought in to create the trench. Sand bags are placed within the trench to restrict water flow and to support the pipe. Step 4. Pipe Transport, Stringing and Assembly When the trench is completed, pre-coated segments of pipe, usually 40 ft in length, are transported from stockpiles in the staging area to the right-of-way. Pipes are laid above ground beside the trench or within the trench on top of supportive sandbags and steep terrain. Certain pipe sections are bent using a pipe bending tool to allow the pipeline to follow the planned route and the terrain. The pipe sections will then be welded together sand blasted, and the weld joints coated with epoxy to prevent corrosion. Finally, the weld joints are inspected with x-ray to ensure their quality. Welding pipe is one of the most challenging tasks any welding professional can do. Due to the sheer number of procedures necessary to create a quality pipe weld, pipe welding requires versatile skills and a lot of experience. Couple this with the harsh working conditions, and you get a job not everyone is meant for. One of the more challenging elements of pipe welding is learning how to transition from one welding position to another as you progress around the circumference of the pipe. The 5G and 6G positions are the most difficult, with the 6G being the toughest to master. A complete pipe weld is composed of different weld passes, and each has its purpose, method of applying, and variables only a professional with experience understands. To add to the complexity, Pipe welding needs to be done promptly and without faults. You can't fall behind the schedule, and repetitive mistakes typically result in losing a job. Provided welding procedures and specifications must be rigorously followed, and the inspector will make sure they are. Typical pipeline welder day starts with a morning brief where everyone gets their assignments for the day, including the number of welds or inches they must complete. Everyone relies on the welder to achieve the required welds. If the welds fall short of the required standards, the welder must make repairs which can be problematic and push back the dates. Step 5. Obstacles, Roads and Streams Pipelines cross existing roads, highways, streams, rivers and wetlands. 
Typically, pipelines are constructed underneath these obstacles by either boring for shallow depth or using horizontal directional drilling HDD, for deeper placement. Other obstacles include abandoned mines, karst topography, and densely populated areas. Each obstacle requires a unique method and order of operations. Step 6. Testing and Restoration After the pipe is inspected, the trench is filled in. Before completing the project, the pipeline integrity must be verified using hydrostatic testing. Pipeline companies receive permits to withdraw millions of gallons of water from streams and rivers along the pipeline path. This water is sent through the pipeline and the pressure is increased to above the maximum operational level. If the pipeline remains intact during this test, it is deemed operational. After this, the surface of the row is seeded and fertilized, and above-ground markers are placed along the pipeline path. Additional Infrastructure While the majority of a pipeline is underground, there are several types of supporting infrastructure that are constructed during a pipeline project. Compressor stations, facilities that maintain the pressure level within the pipeline, are built to support new pipeline projects, or existing stations are upgraded. Additionally, valve stations are built above the right-of-way along the pipeline, allowing operators to shut off sections of the line for maintenance or in an emergency. Metering stations are built along the length of pipelines, providing a measure of the flow of gas throughout the line. To ensure pipeline integrity, wells must be x-rayed and the pipe hydro tested. This process involves pumping in clean water, pressured above the expected MAOP maximum average operating pressure. Then, all water is removed and pigs are inserted into the pipe to clean it out. When the pigs eventually exit the far end of the pipe clean, then the line will be filled with dry air. Air compressors pump up the air, and the air is run through a dryer. The air will be sampled and tested for moisture content. 
When those parameters get low enough, the complete pipeline is filled with nitrogen to absorb more of the remaining moisture. Only then is the pipeline ready to transport natural gas. If you enjoyed this video, please let us know by liking and subscribing. If you have any questions or new topics to discuss, please let me know by commenting below the video.